Hi, Handy GPS is a powerful and fully featured hiking app with everything you need to navigate, record your walk and find your way back to civilization. So when you first start the app, you may need to press the button at the top left, which takes you to the settings page. You can make sure that your loca use location setting is turned on. Um, when you're outside and the phone gets a GPS fix, you'll see the easting and northing fields will contain your current location in UTM coordinates. You can change the type of coordinates to lat longs in degrees, degrees, minutes, seconds, or degrees, minutes here. And you can change the datum here. So normally WGS84 is the most commonly used one. Okay. So the next thing you might want to do is you might want to start a new session. So for example, I'm going to call this session um, Wara Trig Walk. Once you've started a new session, you'll see the name of the session at the top and any files that are stored will be stored in a session folder called Wara Trig Walk. Next, you probably want to press the pause button to start recording your track log. This will record a track log, start the odometer recording and also start the timer. So now you can see the timer is incrementing down the bottom there. And we sh we'll usually want to create a waypoint where we started. So for example, I might create a waypoint at my car. So now I've got a waypoint at my car and if any point I want to go back to my car, I can press the go to button down the bottom and choose the car and the, this page will guide me back to my car and tell me how far away it is. That's the go to page. So the next thing you might want to do is see where you are on a map. So when you press the map button up here, it will center on your current location and it will show any waypoints and track logs that have been recorded as red in red. Um, your current location is shown with that little human figure there. If you prefer, you can change from the map settings here. You can change it to the direction arrow, in which case the little figure will change to an arrow that will point in the direction that you're moving. Okay, so the map page um, by default shows the satellite view, the Google Maps satellite view. You can change this to the other views such as the street view mode if you prefer that. However, the um, Google Maps will only work um, when you've got a cellular connection or Wi-Fi connection. So if you view an area before you go out of cellular range, it will cache it automatically. But if you haven't viewed that area before, then you won't be able to see it. Now, the paid version, which this is, has um, an offline map capability, which I'll cover later. Okay, so along the top row here, we have the compass button. Now, if your phone is equipped with a magnetic field sensor, then this will show you your compass direction. And you can change it between true and magnetic using that option on the menu there. And also, if you want to see the accuracy, you can press the accuracy button. Now, if the accuracy is not high, then you can calibrate the compass by um, rotating it in three, th the three different three-dimensional planes until the accuracy improves. Also, you can show the, rich and the pitch and roll down the bottom. Uh, that's the other two orientations. Um, and you can see the magnetic declination, which is automatically being computed for your location from that menu as well. So in this case, 12 degrees. Okay, the next button along here is the um, grid reference button. Now this will either show the MJRS grid reference, which is doing now, or if you change it in preferences, it will show the um, just the standard um, six figure grid reference, which um, is the bolded numbers in these UTM coordinates here. So 410, 864, for example. Um, we've already covered the map. The waypoints menu lets you choose 
any waypoint and lets you go to it, which brings up that go to page we saw before. It can show you the properties, which is just the coordinates and also the distance and direction to that waypoint, if that's known. Also on the waypoints menu, we can show the waypoint on the map, which just zooms to that location. We can do a waypoint to waypoint, which computes the distance and direction from one waypoint to another. We can email or SMS that location to a friend. We can rename and edit the waypoint. We can move the waypoint. We can project it, which is, um, you give a distance and a direction and it will move, it will create a new waypoint from the existing waypoint in that direction. Um, in addition to going to a waypoint, you can also go to the, the straight line between two waypoints, which might be, you know, two waypoints located on a road that you want to go to, and it'll, it'll just guide you anywhere along that road between those waypoints. Um, there's a few other features here like triangulate, which allows you to record two waypoints and take a bearing from each to some distant location and then Triangulate will create a waypoint at that distant location. You can join waypoints, which just creates a track log between them. You can make a route, which allows you to um, create a route from one waypoint to another, to another, to another, so that when you go to the first one, then it will automatically guide you to the second one, third one, fourth one, so on. And of course, you can delete a waypoint. Okay, so the other fields here, there's the UTM zone shown up here, 56H in this case, because I'm in near Sydney, Australia. Then the easting and northing coordinates, the accuracy of the that's reported from the GPS, so plus or minus three meters in this case. The altitude, now um, the altitude is corrected for the geoid at the local location. Now I'm actually, for this demo, I'm using a fake GPS location, so it's giving a zero altitude, so the geoid is subtracting off 23 meters, that's why you're getting a negative 23. Um, the speed and direction will show you the speed um, that you're moving at when you're moving. The odometer shows you how far you've traveled since it was last reset, and the timer will show you how long you've been walking for. So you can, these buttons next to the timer, you can pause, reset, and you can also um, compute your um, average speed. So in this case it's zero because I haven't moved anywhere. Okay, to the next row down here we have the um, file import button. This lets you um, import any previously exported uh, KML or GPX file. We have the export button which allows you to save the current uh, data. Um, so this is defaults to saving to KML but you can change that to GPX if that's what you prefer in the um, settings. And we have delete button. The delete allows you to delete um, everything or just delete the waypoints or just delete the track logs. The camera button allows you to take a photo from in the app that you can geocode and that will then um, show up in that, in that session. So you can associate the photos of things you found on your walk with that session. Um, the pause button here just uh, pauses the current track log recording. The torch button or flashlight button here will turn on the flashlight, which allows you to use the phone as a torch when it's dark. <clears throat> Further down the bottom here, we've got the preferences button or settings. So each one of these um, plus signs here allows you to expand and see the options underneath. So we've got the general settings, the main page settings, map page settings, go to page, photos, speed alert, uh, fitness, and other advanced settings. Um, going along here we've got the satellite page. Now because I'm using a fake location you're not going to see any satellites on here but normally you'd see um, all the satellites that the phone can can see in the sky and their location um, angle for above the horizon. Um, next along here we have a go to button this just allows you to go to a waypoint. You can do the same from the waypoints menu but this is just easier. Um, we have a help button here and if you're in um, cellular range or you've got Wi-Fi you can bring up the online help and it's lots of useful information about the various features of the app such as offline maps, um, route following, <coughs> custom datums, all that sort of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next button here is the exit button. This um, shuts down the app properly so that it doesn't um, keep using the GPS and using a battery. <coughs> 
and down here there's the menu button. There's a whole lot of um, options on the menu button. I won't go through them all, but there's a few more things you can do with sessions, such as load existing session and rename the session. You can um, share your location data. So this allows you to email your location or SMS your location to a friend if you want them to know where you are, or you can email um, all, all the data that's loaded in currently, so like all your track logs and waypoints. And you can also email a selected uh, KML or GPX file that's already been saved. Um, so further down here, so we can browse photos that have been taken within the app. We can see the sunrise and sunset times, which is useful to know how long you've got left to walk before it gets dark. You can see an elevation profile. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, now I haven't got any data recorded, so it won't, you won't be able to see an elevation profile at the moment. But normally this would show you how um, far you'd climbed and descended on your walk. You can record a voice memo, which allows you just to um, store a, a voice message with, with your current session, or more than one voice message, as many as you want. You can manage a reference set. Now, a reference set is a, another way of, of um, loading data. So normally, um, what I call your working set is the data that you're, the track logs and waypoints that you, you're currently recording and using. The reference set is uh, a separate set that's, locate, that's loaded from previous walks, for example, and they show up as blue on your map. So you can refer back to them, but you can't actually do much with them um, other than see them on your map. Um, so it's useful if you're going back to the same area to see where you've gone before. Um, Web-based tracking is an option. Normally this is off. Um, if it's turned on, then there'll be an asterisk up the top on the title bar to let you know that your location is being tracked. Now what this um, feature does is it lets you um, share your location with selected friends and it's um, it's protected by a pin number so not any no one else can see your uh, location um, further down here we've got edit custom datum and now with this you can choose different coordinate systems around the world it's got some predefined ones for example in Europe and North America and Britain um, but you can also um, you can also enter these parameters um, so the you know spheroid parameters and the WS84 offset parameters and so forth um, it's all quite technical you can look those up on the web usually if you want to find your local country's um, coordinate systems and then you can enter them there you can save them then and uh, and load them um, so that you can use various different coordinate systems in the app so that the app supports um, all transverse Mercator and um, lat long coordinate systems. Okay, so further on the menu here, we've got you can clear your route, you can um, cancel the current go to, and there's a smartwatch uh, menu which allows you to send data to your smartwatch if you have one, and um, download a particular KML or GPX file to the to the watch. Um, so this app also has a version which so if you when you install this app and you have a smartphone i mean a smart watch sorry um it will automatically um install it on the smart watch over bluetooth and then you can especially if your watch has a gps um, circuit built in you can use the um, app standalone on your watch as well so there's a few other features miscellaneous features so you can export to a um, csv file for example and you can um, choose to do GPS averaging and you can show the location in all the different formats like UTM, lat long, all at the same time. So GPS averaging is a useful one, uh, an interesting one. So what you can do is, so GPS, um, the location varies um, from moment to moment, from hour to hour. There's a, there's a bit of inaccuracy. So what this allows you to do is, is if you're staying in the same location and you leave this running for several minutes, it will um, draw a whole lot of set of points on here where the various GPS readings are for your current location. And then it will, when you press on this button, it will create a new waypoint that's the averaged um, location. So anyway, um, finally down here we've got about, this tells you the version of the app and um, has a link to the website. So on the menu, on the map page, there's a few more options. I just might go through briefly. So. 
you can share this map, which just allows you to email the current map view. Um, you can manage your offline maps. So what this allows you to do is um, it allows you to connect to various tile servers. Um, you can set up, you can add new tile servers, you can edit them, um, and you can type in a name of an area that you want to download, and it will download the current view um, on the map. When you press the green button here, the, the blue button is a test button, it just downloads a single tile, and then when, you, when that works, you can press the green button, download the map. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, so here we go. So this is one I downloaded previously. This is um, a New South Wales topo map of the Warratrig area where I'm testing. So this gives you a, a topographic map. Now, if you zoom out, you can see that it's only downloaded uh, a limited um, size of map. That's to reduce the demand on the, the free tile servers. And you can actually have, you can download multiple maps. So you can, I could download another one over here and then I could switch over to that one when I was in that area. So you just need to prepare before you go on your walk. Okay, so there's a few other things here. Um, we can show and hide map items. There's various items. Um, so you can show a scale bar. Uh, each time you press it, it takes a couple of seconds to refresh. There's a scale bar down the bottom there. So as I zoom out, the scale bar refreshes. I'll just turn off the offline maps. So the scale bar refreshes as you zoom out after a few seconds and you can see how big the area you're currently looking at is. So 250 meters there. Um, so there's a whole lot of things you can show on show and hide on there. Um, the reference set, which I mentioned earlier, you can show and hide it here. Um, and you can show where photos have been taken. So that is the um, Handy GPS app. Um, I hope you find it really useful. Uh, it's it's taken about seven years to develop it to this point, and it's, it's very comprehensive. There's a, a lot of things in there, and of course, if you can't find what you're looking for, feel free to um, contact contact me through the website www.binaryearth.net, and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Thanks a lot.